Tony Candela here again, author of Automotive Wiring and Electrical Systems and the newly published Automotive Electrical Performance Projects. We last left off with SPST relays and now this video will cover SPDT relays or single pole double throw. Some people call them single pole dual throw, single pole double throw, same thing. So uh, I apologize this video has taken quite a bit of time to get uh, posted between now and the last one, but it's been really hot here in Phoenix. So uh, enjoy. Now moving on to the specifics of the SPDT relay, um, I have again got my digital meter and I've got it configured so that if I short the probes, uh, it does give off an audible confirmation of continuity. Um, so let's just show you real quick how this relay behaves and what's different about it compared to any of the SPSTs. Um, the yellow in this case is the common terminal of this relay and then the blue um, wire which goes to the center connector on the relay that's the normally closed. So with the relay at rest um, no power connected to either terminal you can see we do have continuity between the common and normally closed, which is what you would expect. Um, we do not have continuity between the common and the normally open. And this is what makes this guy different. So let's power the coil up by connecting ground to one side of the coil and power to the other side of the coil. And then I've just got this momentary switch here where I can press it and close the coil. You can hear the relay clicking. So and yeah, we'll leave this guy on the common and we'll put the red probe on the normally closed press the switch and notice the continuity goes away now if I actually hold the probes like so where I've got the black one on the common and the red one on the normally open when I press the switch to close the coil now I do have continuity so at first that may not seem like all that big a thing, but uh, this relay is used for so many things that a traditional SPST relay cannot be used for. And really what the difference is there is that the relay has a connection to one terminal at rest and it has a connection to another terminal um, when the relay is energized, uh, both from the common obviously. So I'm changing the camera angle a little bit so you guys can see better. Now let's talk about how we can use the um, SPDT relay to do something that we cannot do with any of the three of the SPST relays. And that's going to be to control any kind of a DC motor. Um, on the trainer we have a simple door lock actuator um, mounted and it has two directions either up or down um, as which we can extend manually. Now if we were to connect um, power and ground to this door lock actuator uh, we're going to be able to operate the actuator manually. Now notice what I did was I was able to operate it two directions by reversing the voltage to it and notice that it does not stay fully one position or the other. Um, this is this is actually called a voltage reversal circuit when I'm doing just that, reversing the connections to the motor because as I'm reversing the connections I can cause the, the motor or in this case the actuator to move in either of two directions. Now the reason that the actuator doesn't stay fully down or fully up is because it has a magnetic field created, um, an electromagnetic field and when I create that by energizing the coil of this actuator um, and then I disconnect power to it, um, that electromagnetic field collapses and plus becomes minus and minus becomes plus which causes the motor to move in the opposite direction it did originally. So I'm going to show you a couple things that are kind of neat. Um, let's use this pair of switches over here to control this pair of relays here to control this single actuator. And the reason that we need a pair of relays in this case is because one relay will be used to move the actuator this direction and one relay will be used to move the actuator that direction. So let's make the connections. Um, we already have a pair of switches over here, momentary, that we'll use. So let's uh, 
let's connect those up to the coils of either of these relays. So we'll trigger each of the relays negatively. And so to do so, I'm going through the switches with ground and then I'll connect positive 12 volts to the other side of the coil. So now I should actually be able to operate each of the relays by pressing the switches, which I can. So now that that's done, um, we're actually going to connect the solenoid, or the actuator in this case. We're going to connect it to each of the relays, and we'll use the same green and yellow to keep things straight. So we'll connect green to the common of the relay that we're triggering with the green wire from the switch, and we'll connect yellow to the other side of the actuator to the common of the relay and we're going to trigger with the yellow wire from the switch. Now we're going to connect ground to the normally closed terminal on each of these two relays. That's going to cause this motor to rest at ground. So in that case this is blue I'm trying to keep my hands out of the picture as much as possible. So now we have the normally closed connected to the common at, with the relay at rest. So each of these terminals should rest at ground. Let's verify that. Turn the meter back on. Set it to read continuity audibly. And then we'll connect one probe to ground and the other probe to each side of the actuator. And that does indeed verify that we do have ground. So now let's connect the other side of the switch in each of the relay, which would be the normally open terminal. Let's connect that to 12 volts. So, and we'll do that for each of the two relays. So now we have 12 volts sitting on either of these two terminals and it's ready to be used. And we can do so by pressing one switch or pressing the other switch. Now notice the motor moves in both directions and the motor moves smoothly. And the reason for that is because as we're sending 12 volts to one side of the motor, the other side of the motor rests at ground and vice versa. So when that magnetic field, that electromagnetic field collapses, it has some place to go, which allows the motor to work nice and smoothly. And that, my friends, is the whole idea behind why we use SPDT relays. Now, incidentally, if you have a copy of Automotive Wiring and Electrical Systems, if you turn to page 83, I actually have this circuit and the diagram for it detailed step by step. So for today, that's it for SPDT relays.